So when you look at the mathematics and you realise exactly how bad these um, infestations are locally to us and in our watercourses, we have to get very serious about wiping it out on our lands so that the councils can't use it as an excuse not to defend our communities. This is, as a community, we need to start putting pressure on the people who won't clean up, okay, as a community and make them feel the... the um, the unhappiness of that because they are attributing then to the councils writing us off and we've been paying for all of these weeds controls all through the years the council have been picking up this money and not supplying the service which is beyond me as to how the state government hasn't actually taken action against the councils how the courts haven't taken action against the councils the courts have been properly misled by councils coming to them and saying this person needs to clean up their lantana. Yet in writing, they wrote to uh, Lantana Removal Queensland, to Gary, and said, it's low risk, it's non-toxic, we don't need to worry about it. Okay? And then Brisbane City Council's written to a, to a resident at, uh, not Pullenvala, Brookfield, and said to him, six months later, it's a noxious plant and you need to clean it off your property or else we're going to come and um, take care of it and bill you for it. Now, how does that happen? How does the mayor allow that to happen? Okay? They keep saying to me, oh, put your name down, come work for us, if you put your name down, if we get some money that we're going to put into this. But remember, we actually do care about this, um, this whole problem and we are um, you know, living up to our responsibilities. Now, the, the letter of the law says that material can't be released to the environment. They're not doing that with any of the material across that shire. I can show you infestations all through their parks behind them on Mount Kutha. I can show you infestations in Jindalee, in the middle of the place. I mean, you know, you reckon these guys would get on the ball and do something about some of these infestations just from a numbers game. But, you know, we may have to put in freedom of information requests to get the information to show people that, you know, before we came along, nothing was happening. Now that we've had all this pressure put on them, nothing's happening. They're never going to change the way they operate. They are so used to being able to bully everybody and say, we're just going to do it this way, that nobody will hold them accountable. Our state government doesn't hold them accountable. And our state and federal government both say, we spent millions of your dollars doing the weeds of national significance, of setting up all of these um, programs and everything else, um, of supposed education of the public, which never happened, okay? Um, and the whole time the councils were shooting us in the foot and in the back with um, not doing any of these works. But I believe the state and federal government has set it up like that so as they can come back and then blame the councils later on and try to shift the blame out there to those guys by just simply saying, well, we never bothered to go back and check they were doing the work. We just assumed they were doing the work because it was written in the legislation. The legislation says in the Constitution... Um, that the federal government is responsible for all of the overarching policies and for the funding, okay? The state government is, work, is responsible for the implementation and the actual works. They farm it on down then to the councils who were actually supposed to actually physically do the work because the state government doesn't have a broad base in actual um, works capability. But there are that many departments within the um, state government that sold us completely down the river and knowingly these are actual factual things when i investigated this 12 months ago main road said to me oh well we just farm that work out to the councils <clears throat> okay go see the councils i went to the councils and the council said no we don't do lantana lantana is off the list we don't even bother with lantana that's in writing that's in writing in many many documents that council sent to me because they weren't they weren't taking me very seriously back then okay now Brisbane City Council, Morton Bay Regional Council, all those guys are going, yeah, no, we reckon we're living up to our obligation. We don't have to eradicate it. So basically, we've left it growing in a lot of places. When I spoke to Main Roads again 12 months later, just recently, the same guy was the guy I talked to, which is unusual in, in talking to government. And he was jokingly saying, yeah, you know, we know the councils are operating illegally. He wasn't joking about him saying that. We know that. But they're not spending any money on it, so why should we? Now, how does the public get sold down the river, you ask? 
have a look at that. There's a perfect example. While the um, councils get away with doing nothing, main roads, South East Queensland water, the New South Wales equivalent of South East Queensland water, um, all of the rail departments, the uh, Energexes, all of these departments are never going to spend a cent on this stuff. Queensland Rail's not going to spend a cent on it. They're not going to do it. Why would they? They'd be stupid to spend money on something that these guys are getting away with. Now, your federal government and state government tell you we put all this money into this education program and in actually making a difference. But actually, it didn't. None. Of, that's not true. Remember, we just covered that. None of these players are actually doing that. And the, the state and federal government want to tell you that, oh, no, well, we left the keys with um, the council, so we thought they were educating the public. We even gave them a lot of money to educate the public. We gave them a lot of money for weeds management. You gave them money for weeds management through your rates, but you never got anything for your money. Why isn't the state government, you know, doing something very serious to the councils? If I was taking your money, the taxpayers' money, and not providing the service that I was taking it for, there'd be very serious consequences. And yet, every single council across this nation have been doing this same thing forever. And nobody's actually doing anything about it. We can't possibly continue this on and have these people in charge of these assets. You drive past any of your council, local council uh, depots, and have a look and take a few photos of how much equipment's sitting in that yard. Okay, And there's thousands of depots across very small areas. Go and have a look, take a picture of it, and I'll tell you something, look a bit of that equipment up. You'll find $250,000 tractors. You'll find, you know, um, excavators worth a quarter of a million dollars. You'll find everything in that range. And you'll find millions upon millions of dollars sitting there. And you have a real good look at how often it goes out that door. You're going to be shocked at exactly how much that is. I drive past council down here locally. And you drive past three and four times a day and they're all, there's 20 guys sitting on their deck chairs. 20 of them. There's millions upon millions upon millions of dollars of equipment sitting there. How did I fluke four times I drove past and four times they're all sitting around? I didn't specifically time it to go out at Smoko lunch and afternoon Smoko and, and middle morning Smoko and, and, and whatever other Smokos we're having. You know, we need to start accounting for these dollars because the $75 billion problem today, which is supposed to be low risk because they gave up on it because they lost control of it. So just look at that for the uh, basis of that. Because they lost control of it, what was the plan? There's nobody doing any significant works in these plans and there's no plans that these people have to put capital works programs into place and to understand how to actually take this material out properly and eradicate it once and for all. Instead, they're playing games in putting new people in new positions in biosecurity, right? Because that person has links to lots of different groups. None of those groups did diddly squat. Nowhere has this National Parks or any of these organisations had any success against this material. Not any of its mates, not the other four mates it hangs out with, or the other um, 25 other weeds. Some of them far worse than these weeds. We are in a world of hurt with our children because our agricultural industry is going to bleed to death when these materials get there. We have councils that are ones that are actually working a little bit harder than the other ones that actually say... These weeds like fireweed, fire ants, um, cestrum, uh, and many other of these weeds are now making it into the um, national parks the same way that Lantana did. And when residents that know stuff, farmers that know stuff, say to them, so what's going to happen? Well, you know, the national parks, nothing's going to happen. It's just going to... Even where we eradicate it down here on our lands, it's just going to keep flooding back out of those national parks now that it's made it to those national parks. My way of seeing these things, we are going to have some horrible choices because of our Prime Ministers, 
because of our uh, premiers, because of our departments that have sold us completely down the river, we're going to have terrible decisions where, to be honest, it's like cancer and it's like an airborne cancer. We are going to have to make some real hard choices and isolate those areas. It's going to mean that we're going to have to put a perimeter around those areas and we're going to have to police them forever because of what these people did to us. And I'm the bad guy because I'm bringing you this, this information. I'm the bad guy because of mathematics. It doesn't matter how you work this out. I didn't say it was low risk. I didn't call the dogs off and say, no, nah, you don't have to worry about that, guys. You don't have to go and do that work or to uh, actually provide the service that you took money for. It's okay, just give up on it. I didn't do it, they did it. I'm the bad guy because I'm standing here going, but where they have it growing now is escalating every single day like you wouldn't believe. There are more plants in that 3,600 plant per plant grouping now than there ever was before. Pretty soon we're going to have such strong um, infestations in those mega infestations that the expansion rate isn't calculable. Okay? And then what's going to really be detrimental to our children and our children's future in this country is going to be every year this stuff gets into more inhospitable terrain, harder to get at terrain, more expensive terrain to deal with. What are we going to do? And I'm going to throw this out there. Are we going to go across and nuke every one of our national parks? Completely denude them, wipe them out completely. Not very popular, is it? Are we going to isolate them? Imagine the cost of running a bulldozer right around the whole of those places and then having the government admit we've had to do that because we did this to you for this long. The public is never going to put any money into defending those ecosystems when they're denied access to those ecosystems. That's another thing our government came up with. We're going to kick everybody out of the national parks, out of the state forests, because this is that big a problem, them seeing it is that big an issue. That's why I've got the problems of trying to get that uh, key to get into these national parks to be able to map these things. And yet I'm the only person that's on your side, on your children's side, that's getting no money, no, no funding, no support, no job to go and map this out and quantify this. But I quantify this every week, every month, every year, so that we have film footage to be able to look back on and go, well, you see those perimeter lines? That's how far this material covered now. See, I'm on a, I'm on a thing that I can never lose here. This system of this amount of growth, every year that I refilm these areas, in the seasons of winter and summer, you're going to see those expansions of those materials. And you're going to see exactly how criminal these systems were that the government used on us. You're going to be left with no under, under uh, what's the name, thing of being able to actually physically see that expansion. And when you put the dollar value on those things, this should have been avoided at the five million mark when they spent all that money. If they had us stood on the councils at that point, and the councils were just accountable for keeping it out of these areas that it infests now. Our main roads, well, let's the, our councils first off. Our main roads, okay, they are the two worst national parks, equal with those three. Water board coming right in there with them, okay. Energex doesn't have the lands that those other guys have. What those other guys have is um, water and elevation. Okay, this material is a terrible material when it's down here on these areas here. It's terrible, don't get me wrong. Okay, but when you add elevation to this material, okay, your problems become exponential. When you have water and elevation, you got big problems, okay? But when you have water, elevation and speed, right so this then has the terrain pushing that water over a long distance right these these things here can be 20 k they can be any length they can be enormous the length of these tributaries as they run out of these areas 
which adds to the volume of the um, of the speed that it is being um, transmitted and spread okay so each part of those things ends up being um, so we put speed in there speed elevation and uh, water okay and then where they're sitting in water see so water is two separate different times it comes back into that thing so then you add into roads okay so you got a road sitting here through a cutting so you've got hills up either side here and they're filled in between that so you've got a very big surface in this surface and then from there there will be drainage runs through and runs that water away and because it's a hard surface no water gets through it it sheds all off those edges and you look at those things you'll see drainage ditches come off them at strategic points and every time you'll see a huge big clump of lantana sitting at those edges of those drainage ditches you'll see lantana sitting all the way along those edges outside of those guardrails have a look from Debra through there, Sanford. Have a look everywhere. You'll see them everywhere. You'll see them up the highway, all the way to the Dane Tree. You'll see this playing out in in thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of kilometres. This is both sides of the roads. You have a look next time, and you'll see on the high side of the road where the so, so let's say for instance all the fall falls this way, and the high side of the road is over there, and you'll see infestations all along there and these infestations sometimes if this mountainside goes up higher will be quite green but you look on the other side where all the water comes off those things and you'll see all of this stuff is glowing green it is super pumped it doesn't matter about the quality of the soil that's another lie that was put out there by the government and by other people same as they say that this plant adds to the nutrients of the soil and makes it a beautiful, friable, so it's a lie. It's garbage. It's absolutely untrue. This material will grow in a crevice of a rock with nothing else to prosper it but a good water source. Water is far more important to this plant than what the uh, nutrients it pulls out of the ground. A lot of the stuff that it will take in nutrients comes from its own leaves and comes from that uh, decom decomposition okay <clears throat> it doesn't come from those other things water makes more difference to these plants than any other part of this cycle so you'll find that on certain places that we have those supercells then we'll have cockspur and cat's claw and uh, wild tobacco all help it to grow up into the canopy once this material hits those canopies then it starts to collapse that collapse that forestry once it collapses the forestry, it's up 60, 100 feet in the air. These are the things we have that they call low risk. But you look at $75 billion, it's not low risk. Okay, you look at one, one little infestation. That's only 50,000 acres, and you're talking about a $100 million problem. And that's in a forestry. That's in a place where our National Parks and Wildlife Service have on their sign, we're here to, um, to protect um, <coughs> our heritage and environment. <coughs> and you look at these infestations, they're filmed in their area, on the outskirts of it. They're not going to be keen to give me the keys to go in there and actually film inside of those areas and actually show you more of that stuff. This poisoning that everybody does, the councils, the national parks, all of these people do, the plant stays in situ. It creates an enormous fire risk. You know, 90% of the time they don't kill the plant off properly, but they kill the subsoil life and the weeds come. Weeds that are nowhere else in those ecosystems are clumped under those dead trees. What does that tell you? It tells you they killed the subsoil life. The subsoil life that would have regenerated that surface. Without that subsoil life, the grasses won't grow. That stuff at Dundas where I showed you, and you can just see, you can see 50,000 acres just destroyed, just being wiped out. There's a few trees there in those forest trees, but have a look at the ground cover. There's nothing on the ground. And they're running cattle through there trying to trample the material and the cattle are eating the lantana. And it starts the whole process 
of our Prime Minister and our, our Premiers turned a blind eye to the actual um, welfare rights of the animals, of animals in this country. Our wildlife are eating these berries and eating these plants because there's no other thing to eat there. And they're dying. But people don't go and do an autopsy on a dead kangaroo in the middle of a paddock. They don't go and do it on a bird in the middle of these highland settings where they've eaten too many berries and they've died. Our children's health document that I keep posting all the time says that um, children and adults have died in this country, on record as dying in this country, from eating the berries. And they're telling you that those birds eat the berries and poop them out and spread the... Um, spread the um, infestations but they don't die you know I've shown tons of film footage where you look under the plants there's no life under those plants there's nothing walks through there for 10 years but it keeps dropping those seeds and dropping those seeds each year and creating a storage bank until we get a really strong wet and we blows those seeds out from under there once they're out from underneath those plants then it spreads across that surface in a huge area very laterally very wide because the volume of water pushing has that tendency to be like a shotgun to explode and and create a much bigger zone of influence and that's what we're, we're being lied to by our scientists and by our government the government employed them to tell them what they want to hear how can we cover this up oh we say it's low risk because we lost control of it it's naturalized because we can't imagine an eradication program. We can't imagine an erad eradication program that meets the, um, the uh, growth rate of the material. Until we reach that growth rate, we should never have given up. That should have never been your Prime Minister's choice to make that decision. should never have been your Premier's decision to make that decision. I'm told by the councils and by the, um, the Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energies that it was actually a minister that put that proposal up and the rest of the cabinet voted on it and changed the uh, classification of these materials. It wasn't only Lantana, but nobody, I've asked for that information continuously for 12 months and our Premier has sought not to define or to uh, disclose that information. Our Prime Minister has sought not to disclose or to um, supply that information. 75 billion dollar problem and they decide they're not going to tell us who did what or when it was done or why it was done when governments start to cook the books and actually get not-for-profit organizations together to poll those not-for-profit organizations to call them oh this this mobs a bush regenerator so they know some stuff i said to the brisbane city council who told me that was who they were relying on for uh, information and advice. I said, what you're telling me and is defined by what we witness and what we film in these creeks and, and in these environments is that you are clueless and your um, bush rangers, your bush regenerators are absolutely clueless. Your national parks are clueless because they doubled these infestations in 10 years. Double is not an insignificant number when you're talking about 5 million hectares to 10 million hectares. It's not an insignificant number. That means you're heading for a world of hurt and you then allowed the, state, the councils to give up. You actually even changed the laws and the legislation to try to give them up, but you forgot to take out. The, the kicker in there that you can't release this in, uh, material to the environment the only plants that are not breaking the law are the ones that are over 12 months are under, are under 12 months old because they have not reached their uh, maturity and their propagation then okay that's what I said before it's like God's little joke those plants we can get them out of there and there's no foul there's no continue on they're gone there's no propagation past that point. The councils actually tell you in their books that this book here from the um, state government and federal government tell you that the longer you leave this material in place, the greater the costs. The Department of Natural Resources, Mines and Energy tell you that the, um, 
the biggest cost is in the rehabilitation of the areas that's what frightens them the most but then they don't know everything either because the costs within Lantana and understanding Lantana which is not in this book you won't find any useful information in this book okay Lantana costs a certain amount to remove it and eradicate it it costs a huge amount to process it and to deal with it this processing as the land care does of chopping it up and spreading it over the ground doesn't do any good it suppresses everything okay it is not a successful thing the poisons that they introduce into the environment through the stump um, destroys the subsoil life and the mycorrhizal fungi they're facts okay for a long time Brisbane City Council would not allow me to see anywhere where they did their works with the land care okay they use land care because it's free it's free labor the volunteers go in there they cut the lantana down they shred the lantana spread it over the ground and they poison the stumps if you were paying for it it would be the most ridiculous costly event known to mankind and an absolute waste of time the amount of area that they cover in a day for the cost that it would cost if you're paying for it is obscene but the damage it does to the environment you have to see it to believe it 18 months two years later the whole areas look like a nuke zone none of the grasses none of the subsoil stuff comes back the only thing that comes back are the vines the trees even have had a hard hit because they introduced it into the mycorrhizal fungi the mycorrhizal fungi has its fingers run for kilometers and links to every living thing subsoil they just detonated a nuclear strike subsoil and nuked everything below ground for kilometers and these people tell you this is a successful thing I'd love to have that actually publicized and properly seen as to how devastating that system is to the ecology and they're doing it in watercourses watercourses where we need those grasses for the stabilization of the banks we walk through and we take the plants out just the plants we take them away and we process them and we leave that vegetation intact and we then bring back um, mulch to then uh, bring that fertilization of the um, subsoil life back up and it thrives and that's what our goal is to have a stronger ecosystem than when we started but the lantana to be gone if anything pops up let's let's say for instance take this at the worst case scenario of an argument you might try to throw if anything pops up after from a from a reshoot or from a seed you have 12 months before that plant is actually viable blind freddy at we run eight to ten months if you go through it eight to ten months and you take out anything that showed up again there's no foul even if it was seeds and the seeds the next lot of generation of seeds happen again it's a very fast process to walk through and it's only a few plants and take them out the problem is the government every time they spent our money on any of these systems they just went through and just kept on walking they never had a process in place they never kept going back and making sure that the areas remained um, clear that's what we're battling is the lies told by our prime minister by our um, our premiers by our ministers that they go and put up it's low risk we gave up on it because we couldn't control it and we didn't want to do any more so we gave up we can't afford for this to continue anymore because you look at those figures and can you imagine schools or all of the things that we have when we can't feed our people wars will break out across the world you want to understand that we live in a country where we're fooled into thinking this is, is a prosperous place it's not prosperous anymore our farms are collapsed our um, agriculture industry is collapsed it'll take it years and years to get up our transport industry collapses with those organizations with those entities and our governments don't want to spend any money on these weeds the weeds are going to come back to a already weakened economical economic system that our children's futures are in a terrible terrible place 
our land prices are going to plummet because our councils have written off huge parts of our states. They're facts, they're not my opinions, they're facts. They're written facts in their documents to me. And yet our Prime Minister hasn't acted on any of this, hasn't sat down with me, hasn't contacted me, hasn't sent people and sat down and gone, okay, all right, why is this different? What's changed? Hasn't uh, employed you for consultancy to go out there and map out these terrains and map out these areas and create the priority programs. That's where this has all gone pear-shaped. Our scientists and our systems, when the government went through and paid all this money for this, identified in like 2016, I believe it, in a later time, not so long back, and redid the um, programs of what they felt was priority. And they created asset protection zones and specific targeting to protect things. That was completely incorrect. Any money spent was only spent in that particular avenue. Our, our priority, and this is a little freebie, our priority should have been the high um, production zones. You can see where I'm going and it's so logical. You don't need a scientific degree to go, holy crap, he's right. That's, oh my God, we did the wrong thing. We went completely the wrong way. I know you can say a certain forest is more important than a, than a different place. I know you can say that. And you can say, because people go to that national park and they hang out on this creek here and they swim in this creek here, we want to keep this looking pretty so that they don't know that this this whole thing exists everywhere else in the national park because we're not giving them access to those areas so they don't need to be protected but it's the growth rate of this material is its single greatest problem the next part of that problem is that where this material really thrives in places that we um, interact with less so vacant lands or lands that have very low production we don't use them are the thri thriving grounds, are the breeding grounds for this material in these high output areas. And then the greater mass of the people don't ever see these infestations until they're exploding out of them. And that's one of the biggest problems we're going to face as a nation, is that until they pay and we go after this material completely properly, and we identify it on those on those score sheets and on those uh, those um, those vectors, those um, strategic um, classifications that we give them, we're going to see this material pouring out of places that have very low value to us. So there's radical different things, like I said, just nuke the whole national park. The reality is that somewhere along this line, I think we're going to have to give land away. We're going to quite literally have to say to people, listen, you can have a have a 30 year lease there for nothing, as long as you clean up that lantana, right? Or and the other weeds there, right? I think we're going to have to um, spread out and inhabit these areas and pay people on credits like that and have them destroy these materials. They'll have to run cattle there to pay for their existence on the land, but we're going to have to give them land so that we get people into those zones, into those areas. The trouble with that, and it is going to be a very big problem, is that a lot of the land's very unhospitable. It doesn't have a high value as a agricultural land. It's too remote and difficult terrain. And that's something that I feel is going to be a very, very big problem. And a lot of that a lot of that land has national parks value and, and things like that. And that's why I would say to you we actually need to bring people back into those areas and put camping in those areas. And we need to not be precious about the crap that the greenies say about that. While people enjoy those particular environments, okay, they will okay the releasing of funds to protect those environments. We have millions of specific sites of cultural and uh, national significance that are being decimated because they're closed off to the public, because we're protecting them from the public at the expense of the weeds doing catastrophic damage to them. And the more those things get um, 
held stronger held the harder and the more money we're going to have to spend to turn those things around if we encourage people to enjoy some of these beautiful spots and sit in a creek once again and not feel guilty about sitting their backsides in a creek on a beautiful hot day and show them how beautiful that is and then say hey listen how about taking some of this lantana out how about smashing it up and getting rid of it we will change some of these things without the enormous costs involved it also will help people to understand why they need to clean up their lands why they need to um, care about those lands and then to um, get other people to um, to want to take action that wouldn't normally take action that's the exact same problem that we've got with the councils and with the uh, main roads and the uh, South East Queensland water it's not they don't have the money it's they won't allocate the money to those problems main roads won't allocate it until this vid video gets painful enough to main roads they're not going to open their checkbook at all they keep saying listen just put your name down we'll get back to you one day when we have some money and when we're interested in doing something about that but their legal biosecurity obligation says that they have to eradicate that material but see we get into precious talk all the time and that's what gets used against us as a nation oh no eradication is not in the wording of that it just says it can't be released into the environment okay smarty how do you stop it from being released into the environment show me that unless it's living in a sterile bubble it's being released into the environment you muppet we shouldn't be being nice about this these people have cost us 75 billion dollars to today next year next year that's going to be what 80 90 90 million something like that 85 million something like that heading to in the next 10 years being 300 billion dollar problem with one weed not not with all of the weeds we cannot keep listening to the government and pretending this does not exist at 75 billion dollars we can't afford it now but what we can't afford is to turn our back on it and it be a 300 billion dollar problem at 300 billion dollars it's going to affect us growing food and farmers can't survive now our greatest asset in our country is our farmers they're the ones that feed the people and we let the supermarkets destroy their businesses and we don't care we let governments destroy their businesses and we don't care because the government falsely puts up all of these things through the worldwide wildlife fund saying that only farmers kill koalas farmers don't kill koalas I can tell you now national parks kill more koalas and more Australian native species than any other entity if you put all of the farmers and everybody and every developer into that group they still would not kill as many animals as what the national parks kill with their burns programs when you back burn to the main fire every single animal within that that zone dies dead if firefighters get caught in any of those fires in any of those zones what happens to them they're dead it's happened before and we call it a tragedy and it is the worst possible thing in the world we should not be putting our firefighters into environments that we allowed to get so infested with lantana we have access tracks in those national parks where there is one course one direction one thing you can't turn around this is serious the real people in the world need to actually know this there's no roundabout somewhere there's no turnaround you get stuck on that track and the fire turns on you in any way you are not getting off that area and that has happened time and again I have people in bulldozers that drive bulldozers they can plow down the side of the mountain if they really there's nowhere to go if some if somebody drops a match while you're in there doing that job you are dead there is nowhere that you're going to and yet we never hear about these things and they are real catastrophic things that will happen eventually that stuff at Dan Dundas on Kipper Creek Road 
You look at all of that material there that is tinder dry and been poisoned the hell out of. You look at the shoulders of those roads where they cleared those roads, okay, and they just ran the blade through. The lantana's all sitting there. Now that this rain's here, that lantana of all have reshot. It'll be back there in by oh, in about two months' time. And the rural fire brigade wrote to a resident and said we won't be coming out there if there's a fire anywhere along that because the national parks has all that dead material up to that point okay and then the um council has it to the point that it's only a vehicle wide you can't possibly drive through there once the fire hits there so you guys at the end of it with nowhere else to go out that road you are on your own you're dead your toddlers your children are all dead and you know what that person took that letter to the minister and suddenly something was done. The council came along and tried to trim the edges of the road. You've seen it there. Look at the erosion issues they created. And they took all of that material, all of that dead lantana, well not dead lantana, all of the lantana they trimmed off there and they put it in that dirt pile at the end of the road there. A huge dirt stockpile with the lantana already planted in it. What do you think is going to happen there? You know it. I'm going to film it in about uh, three weeks to uh, six weeks time. And it will be a shooting mess of magnificence. All over again. And that's what we deal with. And the Somerset Council says, and if we get hassled over the levels of the infestations, then we're going to go after the general public. We're going to go after the mums and pas and the kids right that have lantana on their property not we're going to clean up all of the illegal material we have and then once we've cleaned that up then the um, residents have a problem the department of natural resources mines and energy said to me you know what that's called that's called payback then those residents get to vote when the election comes around and hopefully none of the councillors from that council get back in and the mayor definitely gets sacked but that has to be across the whole eastern part of the country. We have to sack all of the mayors. We have to sack all of the councillors. Because when you drive out there and you look out your driveway at Mount Me and you see the levels of those infestations immediately along your boundary just trying to enter your property and then they're going to say to you, well, there's an infestation down there in the back of your property or down in that gully, so we're not going to do anything here at all then how do they meet their their, bio, um, their biosecurity responsibility to not release that material to the um, environment? They haven't. They haven't done it for years. And the worst part is they're not intending to do it. They just give lip service to me and say, oh, listen, come join the crew. You can fill out an application to become one of the <coughs> suppliers to us and we'll go from there. I'm not going to go and join a system that doesn't work and you haven't eradicated any lantana in the last 10 years. In fact, you doubled it. So whatever you did was the opposite of what works. I eradicate it. It dies. It's dead. I'm not going to price a job to compete with somebody who doesn't get it done. I'm not going to become um, unproductive to fit a mold that says, well, I'm competing against somebody who doesn't succeed. When I eradicate lantana, I eradicate it, it's gone, it's finished, it don't come back. If that takes two passes or three passes, that's what eradicating lantana is. But it's not three times the original cost. But it wouldn't matter. I, and I suspect that you're going to find that their actual costs that these guys are charging aren't cheaper anyway. But I'm not going to compete and try and do the work that way. I'm not going to have a council who's clueless say to me, well, I want you to scrape that off, just like we did at, um, at uh, Kipper Creek Road. Just scrape it off there, leave all of that stuff intact, just so long as it's quick, it's fast, and we do this, and we mulch this up, and we leave all that material on top just to suppress everything and kill everything off, and the erosion continues. And it just continues to be a nightmare. I'm not going to do the wrong thing by the environment and by the public. We have to start getting very serious about how we spend our dollars so that we actually get this material from the places that it matters most. We have to get it from the high country and work down surface and wipe it out. 
it means a complete rethink of how we do these things. And it's going to mean that even with my own mind and my own um, operations, I believe that we're going to have to have funding to be able to hybridize things. Because I think the sheer volume of the areas that we have to deal with, with this problem in the future, the, the systems, my system is completely effective and completely eradicates the material, but the system that we're going to have to develop in the future is going to have to be um, so far hybridized so as that we can actually um, cover so much bigger areas. It's going to become three different systems all together operating as a um, entity to to be able to do instead of be able to do a um, hundred thousand acres a year to be able to do a million acres a year it's gonna have to be scaled up and done differently so that we can um, cover the mega areas that we need to get to to be able to uh, meet the growth rate but we don't have a choice to meet the growth rate it doesn't matter what that costs it's a capital works program that unless we get that, we are not going to have f food security. Okay? Farmers have enough um, issues happening with all the other chemicals and all the other, um, you know, fertility issues that if we throw the weeds section at them as well, we're going to lose our agricultural industry completely. And our government is completely inept at looking after that system. You look at the pittance that they gave them with the drought you look at the absolute slap in the face and disconnect that they have for any reality within the public sector you know for them to say that 75 75 billion dollars is um you know an insignificant amount and something that we can turn our back on when it's growing every year we cannot keep doing it we can't keep doing it and a lousy 50,000 acres is a hundred million dollar problem under that system and it's continuing to grow every year now these rains are here now these waters are here now these storms are here those things are exploding the growth rate of these materials down all this road all the way from Petrie to, to Debra is an absolute disgrace and yet there is no plans for the Morton Bay Regional Council to clean any of that material up. It cannot be allowed to live there, I can tell you now. I don't mind because it's going to mean an enormous industry in the future. Sooner or later, the public will rise up enough and enough attention will come to it and money will be spent on it and it will be cleaned off those surfaces. It's guaranteed because it cannot be left there. But how that changed our ecological um, nightmare should have been brought to people's attention a long time ago. The fact that I've had to pull all this apart to, to... The government still tries not to give you that information. They still try to do their best to mislead and not release that information. You know, um, it's a lot of work to get these things and pull them apart and find, well, so the um, councils have done this for this long and they're, they're not planning to change. When I hit them up, each time with these letters to the mayors and they are really peed off with me okay when I write to them with this stuff they um, keep saying that you know just put your name in the hat and price against these people when work comes up we'll let you know when it comes up we'll get back to you hold on a minute you're operating illegally you have hundreds of thousands of acres of this material already spread out of our entire um, Shire and you've turned your back on all these areas. Sorry, you've got to go out there and get that. Southeast Queensland Water said exactly the same thing. We've got uh, got four places across Southeast Queensland that we've got an operation in. Not they don't tell you it's a ten million dollar operation. It wouldn't matter what it is. And we're working in those areas in a staggered thing. So go away, and we'll let you know. We'll keep your mind if we want to do any work somewhere up. Now hold on a minute. Rush Creek for 5Ks is a complete whiteout to Lantana and other um, deadly toxic plants. Completely infested. And nothing's being done there. You don't get to pick and choose. You don't get to say, well, we, you know, we'll get around to doing something somewhere else. Uh, no, hold on a minute. The government caused this. The state government's responsible for this. Miss, you know... Our Premier is responsible for this. Why hasn't this been dealt with? Why aren't you picking up the phone and going, OK, let's shut you up. 
let's get down and sit down properly and work out how we're going to put actual effective plans in place that we can start you know quantifying specific um, levels specific um, targets and then we go after those targets and we've got to start it kicking the legs out from underneath those high value high growth targets and I'm the only one who has the knowledge of what they are and what to do about them and I'm the only person who can operate machinery in those areas poisoning has to be banned we have to take the government at both levels three levels grab them by the scruff of the neck and you guys poisonings off the list the ecological damage that you do subsoil is expediting this problem it is just exploding this problem and it's creating enormous erosion problems with it we have to get away from that mentality it's completely completely devoid of any uh, responsibility it also creates a fire hazard that our citizens are going to pay for women children and fathers are going to die somewhere along this line with fires that were created by this poisoning process because they never go back and take these plants out of the system the plant stays there as a fire hazard we are going to have an enormous fire go through one day that's just going to blow through the hills to match America with their wildfires, their wild brush fires. We're going to have them in Queensland where we usually only have them in, in South Australia and in the lowest, lower states. And it's all going to be because of our Prime Minister and our Premiers and our failures of our governments to act and stand on the councils. If the councils won't do the work, which they will never do the work, it will not matter how much money the government gave to them, they will never do this work. The only way forward is for you guys to share this information, for you guys to, you know, put it out there to everybody else and help them to um, share it and to get this message out there around the people. And look at these things. Do you consider $75 billion problem not to be a problem? It's low risk. The growth rates of the material where you have one plant equals 400 new plants in a year. And if it lives in the bottom of a watercourse or on the side of a road, that jumps to 3,600 new plants per year from one plant. And they tell you it's low risk. That's in their book. You know, like that's, that's their information. And it actually plays out out there. But there are no animals use this material. And even if they did, the danger that this material provides to our um, ecology far outweighs anything that they could ever say that, oh, something might use it. They don't even name what it is. But we can no longer let the lies dictate to us. This material has to be eradicated. It has to be eradicated in massive amounts that have never before been touched. And yet I can operate machinery in those areas. They want to set up a system where they say, no, nobody can operate in there, so we couldn't even ma match what we needed to do, so let's just give up. But hold on a minute. Look at the growth rates. You can never give up. You can never turn your back. You can never quit. Until we reach the uh, growth rate in the material, we will never, ever be safe. And the thing that we've got to understand is that it's not um, multiplying this figure in the cost of this figure. While we're out there doing this particular weed, you are doing all the other weeds that exist there. So the actual cost across all of the weeds comes down dramatically because you're dealing with those other weeds while you're there. We will come up with new processes, new systems to deal with all those other weeds while you're in those environments. We will sink more water into the ground. Every part of it is a win-win. We have our floods because this material takes up so much of our lands. And the water flushes and runs this material and propagates it further and faster because there is no penetration to the ground under this material. This material creates such a, um, such a leaf blanket that you can pull the leaves back and the ground's completely dry. Even after good rain like this, it's completely dry. Nothing penetrated. If the leaf litter on the ground gets too thick on any ecosystem, it stops the moisture from getting into that ground. Only long, slow, soaking rain of days and days and weeks and weeks 
will penetrate the ground. The rest hits that leaflet and goes, Phew! gone. And that's why we have more floods. That's why we have more droughts. We are getting less water into our subsoil life than we ever have before, and nobody's caring at all. Nobody cares about that subsoil life, and it, the subsoil life is responsible for the nutrients that make our uh, food nutrients rich and dense, and that's one of the big problems that we're facing. Our food is getting so poor in its nutrient quality because we're not caring about the big picture. And yet the big picture doesn't cost more. It just means we've got to pay attention to these things, to the things that change everything. I'm Gary. I'm from Lantana Removal, Queensland, and I'm the only one that is bringing all, all of this information to you. And I will continue to film and document all of these things, both in winter, in summer, and all the way through, to try and get these messages to you of exactly how dangerous the lantana and the rest of these materials are to our families and to our existence. And the expansion rate of this materials makes them anything but low risk. The dollar value of just cleaning it up at today's prices, if we could just stop it there and just go, okay, there won't be any propagation forward, would be $75 billion. But we're not going to stop it like that. We have to start here and we have to go forward and we have to meet that growth rate. When we meet the growth rate, we'll get a little breath of air and we'll be able to just for a second pause for a second and think, okay, how are we doing? Let's reflect. Now let's go again and let's get these other guys because that's what we have to do. And we're going to have some terrible tough choices along that way, but I didn't make this problem. I didn't cover it up. I didn't mislead you. The government did all that. The councils did all that and they're still doing it today. We need to hold the government, the federal government, the state government and the councils responsible for what we have today. And that's nothing to what we're going to have in the next five years, the next 10 years, quadrupled in the next 10 years without a problem. And that's just picking a figure. It's liable to be far worse than quadrupled if we don't get some absolute, dedicated, serious situations. Spending half a billion dollars offshore was the most stupid thing that our government has ever done. The problems that we have on land are causing the problems that we have on the sea. Why the hell would you spend half a billion dollars on that when you don't half yeah half a billion on that when you don't spend anything on this? And you hide this, you cover this up, and this is causing even more of those effluent runoffs more of the silting we need to get after this and we need to stop letting them talk around it I'm going to go to uh, government this week and we're going to have a look at some of the things in there and we'll see what they've got to say in there it'll be interesting filming thank you very much for your time I really appreciate it um, I really appreciate your support until people start funding this and start putting money in so as I can uh, spread this word more it's such a big burden on us and the family and the government turns around and goes you all no one else cares why should we bother um, they don't bother to um, do that the only thing they look at is when you share the stuff and you discuss the stuff with other people those figures are the truth and they don't lie those films show you the actual infestations just in a small area that's only a very small area it's nothing to the picture that's out there that's thousands of that's from the Daintree to the bottom of New South Wales and the New South Wales say that they'll cross the border any time they see fit and they won't even co contact Queensland to tell them they're going to cross the border to eradicate material as they see fit. And Queensland says the same thing. You show me somewhere where that type of seriousness exists, anywhere, and these people still turn around to you even recently and say it's low risk because we lost control of it. I'd say they lost control of it at 10 million hectares or they lost control, but they don't have any idea of how to deal with it. That's the stupidity of it. Instead of them coming to me and going, okay, it's all right, you're talking that stuff there, how do we actually physically do it? Not one phone call. Not one department has picked up the phone and said, listen, you're making waves, and that's fair enough. Either you're completely nuts or you are that good. Let's get after this and let's do something. Nut no, doesn't happen. The councils are never going to spend a cent on it. And the state and federal government need to understand that because no matter what they do, 
the councils will will always be a major liability to all of us they purposely tell you not to worry they purposely tell you we've got it growing everywhere so don't worry about it they have it all around you but then when it's on your land and they decide to for whatever reason they picked on you they will come after it on your land how does that work how is the court system allowing that corruption to happen how is the court system being a party to that corruption to being misled by criminals people who are growing this material everywhere against the law and nobody has ever taken this to the judges and to the courts and to the now hold on a minute I did I took this to the Attorney General's office who oversees the courts and says well it's not really our problem that's a council issue and it's also Mark Ferner's issue so I've referred your letter to Mark Ferner my complaint wasn't about the agricultural side of it or about the weed side of it it was about the legal side of it it was specifically and undeniably written that I'm concerned that the councils have been picking up all of this money for for the last 20 to 30 years and not fulfilling their service requirements not fulfilling those um, those services but more than that they went to the courts continuously. This is only reason they they have corruptly um, lied to the courts while they've while this has been going on. We cannot keep tolerating this and allowing this to happen. Anyway, I'm Gary. Thank you for joining us. We'll catch you on the next one. Bye bye.